Babylonia, was an ancient Akkadian-speaking state and cultural area based in central southern Mesopotamia present-day Iraq. A small Amorite-ruled state emerged in 1894 BC, which contained the minor administrative town of Babylon. It was merely a small provincial town during the Akkadian Empire BC, but greatly expanded during the reign of Hammurabi in the first half of the 18th century BC and became a major capital city. During the reign of Hammurabi and afterwards, Babylonia was called the country of Akkada. Matakadi in Akkadian, it was often involved in rivalry with the older state of Assyria to the north and Elam to the east in ancient Iran. Babylonia briefly became the major power in the region after Hammurabi, Florida, c. 1792 to 1752 BC Middle Chronology, or c. 1696 to 1654 BC short chronology created a short-lived empire succeeding the earlier Akkadian Empire third dynasty of Yur an old Assyrian empire the Babylonian Empire, however, rapidly fell apart after the death of Hammurabi and reverted to a small kingdom. Like Assyria, the Babylonian state retained the written Akkadian language, the language of its native populace, for official use, despite its northwest Semitic speaking Amorite founders and Kassite successors, who spoke a language isolate, not being native Mesopotamians. It retained the Sumerian language for religious use, as did Assyria, but already by the time Babylon was founded, this was no longer a spoken language, having been wholly subsumed by Akkadian. The earlier Akkadian and Sumerian traditions played a major role in Babylonian and Assyrian culture, and the region would remain an important cultural center, even under its protracted periods of outside rule. The earliest mention of the city of Babylon can be found in a clay tablet from the reign of Sargon of Akkada BC, dating back to the 23rd century BC. Babylon was merely a religious and cultural center at this point and neither an independent state nor a large city. Like the rest of Mesopotamia, it was subject to the Akkadian Empire, which united all the Akkadian and Sumerian speakers under one rule. After the collapse of the Akkadian Empire, the South Mesopotamian region was dominated by the Gushan people for a few decades before the rise of the Third Dynasty of Yur, which restored order to the region and which, apart from northern Assyria, encompassed the whole of Mesopotamia, including the town of Babylon. History. Pre-Babylonian Sumero-Akkadian period Mesopotamia had already enjoyed a long history prior to the emergence of Babylon, with Sumerian civilization emerging in the region c. 3500 BC, and the Akkadian speaking people appearing by the 30th century BC. During the 3rd millennium BC, an intimate cultural symbiosis occurred between Sumerian and Akkadian speakers, which included widespread bilingualism. The influence of Sumerian on Akkadian and vice versa is evident in all areas, from lexical borrowing on a massive scale, to syntactic, morphological, and phonological convergence. This has prompted scholars to refer to Sumerian and Akkadian in the 3rd millennium as a sprachbund. Akkadian gradually replaced Sumerian as the spoken language of Mesopotamia somewhere around the turn of the 3rd and the 2nd millennium BC, the precise time frame being a matter of debate, from c. 
3500 BC until the rise of the Akkadian Empire in the 24th century BC, Mesopotamia had been dominated by largely Sumerian cities and city-states, such as Ur, Lagash, Uruk, Kish, Isan, Lhasa, Adab, Eridu, Gassur, Ashur, Hamazi, Akshik, Arbela and Umma, although Semitic Akkadian names began to appear on the king lists of some of these states such as Eshnana and Assyria between the 29th and 25th centuries BC. Traditionally, the major religious center of all Mesopotamia was the city of Nippur where the god Enlil was supreme, and it would remain so until replaced by Babylon during the reign of Hammurabi in the mid 18th century BC. The Akkadian Empire BC saw the Akkadian Semites and Sumerians of Mesopotamia unite under one rule, and the Akkadians fully attain a Tendency over the Sumerians and indeed come to dominate much of the ancient Near East. The empire eventually disintegrated due to economic decline, climate change, and civil war, followed by attacks by the Gushans from the Zagros Mountains. Sumer rose up again with the Third Dynasty of Ur in the late 22nd century BC and ejected the Gushans from southern Mesopotamia. They also seem to have gained ascendancy over much of the territory of the Akkadian kings of Assyria in northern Mesopotamia for a time, followed by the collapse of the Sumerian Your three dynasty at the hands of the Elamites in 2002 BC. The Amorites, a foreign northwest Semitic speaking people, began to migrate into southern Mesopotamia from the northern Levant, gradually gaining control over most of southern Mesopotamia, where they formed a series of small kingdoms, while the Assyrians reasserted their independence in the north. The states of the south were unable to stem the Amorite advance, and for a time may have relied on their fellow Akkadians in Assyria for protection. King Elu Shuma c. 2008–1975 BC of the old Assyrian Empire 2025–1750 BC in a known inscription describes his exploits to the south as follows. The freedom of the Akkadians and the children I established. I purified the copper. I established the freedom from the border of the marshes and Yor and Nippur, Awal, and Kish, there of the goddess Ishtar, as far as the city of Ashur. Past scholars originally extrapolated from this text that it means he defeated the invading Amorites to the south and Elamites to the east, but there is no explicit record of that, and some scholars believe the Assyrian kings were merely giving preferential trade agreements to the south. These policies were continued by his successors Erishim I and Akunim. However, when Sargon I 1920 BC succeeded as king in Assyria in 1920 BC, he eventually withdrew Assyria from the region, preferring to concentrate on continuing the vigorous expansion of Assyrian colonies in Anatolia and the Levant, and eventually southern Mesopotamia fell to the Amorites, a northwest Semitic-speaking people from the northern Levant. During the first centuries of what is called the Amorite period, the most powerful city states in the south were Isin, Eshnana, and Lhasa, together with Assyria in the north. <laughs> first Babylonian dynasty, Amorite dynasty, 1894 1595 BC One of these Amorite dynasties founded a small kingdom of Kazalu which included the then still minor town of Babylon circa 1894 BC, which would ultimately take over the others and form the short-lived First Babylonian Empire, also called the First Babylonian Dynasty. 
An Amorite chieftain named Sumu Abam appropriated a tract of land which included the then relatively small city of Babylon from the neighboring Amorite ruled Mesopotamian city state of Kazalu, of which it had initially been a territory, turning his newly acquired lands into a state in its own right. His reign was concerned with establishing statehood amongst a sea of other minor city-states and kingdoms in the region. However Sumuabum appears never to have bothered to give himself the title of King of Babylon, suggesting that Babylon itself was still only a minor town or city, and not worthy of kingship. He was followed by Sumu Lael, Sabiam, Apple Sin, each of whom ruled in the same vague manner as Sumuabum, with no reference to kingship of Babylon itself being made in any written records of the time. Sin Mubalit was the first of these Amorite rulers to be regarded officially as a king of Babylon, and then on only one single clay tablet. Under these kings, the nation in which Babylon lay remained a small nation which controlled very little territory, and was overshadowed by neighboring kingdoms that were both older, larger, and more powerful, such as, Isin, Lhasa, Assyria to the north and Elam to the east in ancient Iran. The Elamites occupied huge swathes of southern Mesopotamia, and the early Amorite rulers were largely held in vassalage to Elam. <laughs> Empire of Hammurabi Babylon remained a minor town in a small state until the reign of its sixth Amorite ruler, Hammurabi, during 1792–1750 BC or c. 1728–1686 BC in the short chronology. He conducted major building work in Babylon, expanding it from a small town into a great city worthy of kingship. A very efficient ruler, he established a bureaucracy, with taxation and centralized government. Hammurabi freed Babylon from Elamite dominance, and indeed drove the Elamites from southern Mesopotamia entirely. He then systematically conquered southern Mesopotamia, including the cities of Isin, Lhasa, Eshnana, Kish, Lagash, Nippur, Borsippa, Yur, Uruk, Uma, Adab, Sippa, Rapikam, and Eridu. His conquests gave the region stability after turbulent times, and coalesced the patchwork of small states into a single nation. It is only from the time of Hammurabi that southern Mesopotamia acquired the name Babylonia. Hammurabi turned his disciplined armies eastwards and invaded the region which a thousand years later became Iran, conquering Elam, Gushans, Lulubi, and Kassites. To the west, he conquered the Amorite states of the Levant modern Syria and Jordan including the powerful kingdoms of Mari and Yamhad. Hammurabi then entered into a protracted war with the old Assyrian Empire for control of Mesopotamia and dominance of the Near East. Assyria had extended control over much of the Hurrian and Hattian parts of southeast Anatolia from the 21st century BC, and from the latter part of the 20th century BC had asserted itself over the northeast Levant and central Mesopotamia. After a protracted struggle over decades with the powerful Assyrian kings Shamshi Adad I and Ishmael Dagonai, Hammurabi forced the successor Mut Ashgur to pay tribute to Babylon c. 1751 BC, giving Babylonia control over Assyria's centuries old Hattian and Hurrian colonies in Anatolia. One of Hammurabi's most important and lasting works was the compilation of the Babylonian Law Code, which improved the much earlier codes of Sumer, Akkada, and Assyria. This was made by order of Hammurabi after the expulsion of the Elamites and the settlement of his kingdom. 
In 1901, a copy of the Code of Hammurabi was discovered on a stele by Jacques de Morgan and Jean Vincent Scheil at SUSA in Elam, where it had later been taken as plunder. That copy is now in the Louvre. From before 3000 BC until the reign of Hammurabi, the major cultural and religious center of southern Mesopotamia had been the ancient city of Nippur, where the god Enlil was supreme. Hammurabi transferred this dominance to Babylon, making Marduk supreme in the pantheon of southern Mesopotamia with the god Ashur, and to some degree Ishtar, remaining the long dominant deity in northern Mesopotamian Assyria. The city of Babylon became known as a holy city, where any legitimate ruler of southern Mesopotamia had to be crowned. Hammurabi turned what had previously been a minor administrative town into a large, powerful and influential city, extended its rule over the entirety of southern Mesopotamia, and erected a number of impressive buildings. The Amorite ruled Babylonians, like their predecessor states, engaged in regular trade with the Amorite and Canaanite city states to the west, with Babylonian officials or troops sometimes passing to the Levant and Canaan, and Amorite merchants operating freely throughout Mesopotamia. The Babylonian monarchy's western connections remained strong for quite some time. Ami Ditana, great grandson of Hammurabi, still titled himself King of the Land of the Amorites. Ami Ditana's father and son also bore Amorite names, Abi Eshu and Ami Saduka. Topic: <laughs> Decline. Southern Mesopotamia had no natural, defensible boundaries, making it vulnerable to attack. After the death of Hammurabi, his empire began to disintegrate rapidly. Under his successor Samsuiluna (1749–1712 BC), the far south of Mesopotamia was lost to a native Akkadian-speaking king Ilum Mar Ili, who ejected the Amorite-ruled Babylonians. The south became the native Sealand dynasty, remaining free of Babylon for the next 272 years. Both the Babylonians and their Amorite rulers were driven from Assyria to the north by an Assyrian Akkadian governor named Puzur Sin Si. 1740 BC, who regarded King Mutashgur as both a foreign Amorite and a former lackey of Babylon. After six years of civil war in Assyria, a native king named Adarsi seized power c. 1735 BC, and went on to appropriate former Babylonian and Amorite territory in central Mesopotamia, as did his successor Bel Bani. Amorite rule survived in a much reduced Babylon. Samshu Aluna's successor Abi Eshu made a vain attempt to recapture the Sealand dynasty for Babylon, but met defeat at the hands of King Damki Elishu II. By the end of his reign, Babylonia had shrunk to the small and relatively weak nation it had been upon its foundation, although the city itself was far larger than the small town it had been prior to the rise of Hammurabi. He was followed by Ami Ditana and then Ami Saduka, both of whom were in too weak a position to make any attempt to regain the many territories lost after the death of Hammurabi contenting themselves with peaceful building projects in Babylon itself. Samsu Ditana was to be the last Amorite ruler of Babylon. Early in his reign he came under pressure from the Kassites, a people speaking an apparent language isolate originating in the mountains of what is today northwest Iran. Babylon was then attacked by the Indo-European-speaking, Anatolia-based Hittites in 1595 BC. Shamshu Ditana was overthrown following the sack of Babylon 
by the Hittite king Mursili I. The Hittites did not remain for long, but the destruction wrought by them finally enabled their Kassite allies to gain control. The sack of Babylon and ancient Near East chronology The date of the sack of Babylon by the Hittites under King Mursili I is considered crucial to the various calculations of the early chronology of the ancient Near East, as it is taken as a fixed point in the discussion. Suggestions for its precise date vary by as much as 230 years, corresponding to the uncertainty regarding the length of the Dark Age of the much later Late Bronze Age collapse, resulting in the shift of the entire Bronze Age chronology of Mesopotamia with regard to the Egyptian chronology. Possible dates for the sack of Babylon are Ultra short chronology, 1499 BC, Short chronology, 1531 BC, Middle chronology, 1595 BC, Long chronology, 1651 BC, Ultra long chronology, 1736 BC Kassite dynasty, 1595–1155 BC The Kassite dynasty was founded by Gandash of Mari. The Kassites, like the Amorite rulers who had preceded them, were not originally native to Mesopotamia. Rather, they had first appeared in the Zagros Mountains of what is today northwestern Iran. The ethnic affiliation of the Kassites is unclear. However, their language was not Semitic or Indo-European, and is thought to have been either a language isolate or possibly related to the huro eurasian language family of Anatolia, although the evidence for its genetic affiliation is meager due to the scarcity of extant texts. However, several Kassite leaders may have borne Indo-European names, and they may have had an Indo-European elite similar to the Mitanni elite that later ruled over the Hurrians of central and eastern Anatolia. The Kassites renamed Babylon Cardunias and their rule lasted for 576 years, the longest dynasty in Babylonian history. This new foreign dominion offers a striking analogy to the roughly contemporary rule of the Hyksos in ancient Egypt. Most divine attributes ascribed to the Amorite kings of Babylonia disappeared at this time. The title, God, was never given to a Kassite sovereign. However, Babylon continued to be the capital of the kingdom and one of the holy cities of Western Asia, where the priests of the ancient Mesopotamian religion were all powerful, and the only place where the right to inheritance of the short lived old Babylonian Empire could be conferred. Babylonia experienced short periods of relative power, but in general proved to be relatively weak under the long rule of the Kassites, and spent long periods under Assyrian and Elamite domination and interference. It is not clear precisely when Kassite rule of Babylon began, but the Indo-European Hittites from Anatolia did not remain in Babylonia for long after the sacking of the city, and it is likely the Kassites moved in soon afterwards. Agam II took the throne for the Kassites in 1595 BC, and ruled a state that extended from Iran to the Middle Euphrates. The new king retained peaceful relations with Erisham III, the native Mesopotamian king of Assyria, but successfully went to war with the Hittite Empire, and 24 years after, the Hittites took the sacred statue of Marduk, he recovered it and declared the god equal to the Kassite deity. Bernaburi Ashai succeeded him and drew up a peace treaty with the Assyrian king Puzur Ashur III, and had a largely uneventful reign, as did his successor Kashtili Ash III. 
The Sealand dynasty of southern Mesopotamia remained independent of Babylonia and in native Akkadian speaking hands. However, Ulamburiash managed to attack it conquered parts of the land from Ea Gamal, a king with a distinctly Sumerian name, around 1450 BC, whereupon Ea Gamal fled to his allies in Elam. The Sealand dynasty region still remained independent however, and the Kassite king seems to have been unable to finally conquer it. Ulamburiash began making treaties with ancient Egypt, which then was ruling southern Canaan, and Assyria to the north. Karindash built a bas-relief temple in Uruk and Kurigalzu I built a new capital Der Kurigalzu named after himself, transferring administrative rule from Babylon. Both of these kings continued to struggle unsuccessfully against the Sealand dynasty. Agam III also campaigned against the Sealand dynasty, finally wholly conquering the far south of Mesopotamia for Babylon, destroying its capital Der and Lil in the process. From there Agam III extended farther south still, invading what was many centuries later to be called the Arabian Peninsula, and conquering the pre-Arab state of Dilmun in modern Bahrain. Karindash strengthened diplomatic ties with the Assyrian king Ashur bel Nishishu and the Egyptian pharaoh Thutmose III and protected Babylonian borders with Elam. Kadasman Harbour I succeeded Karindash, and briefly invaded Elam before being eventually defeated and ejected by its king Tepti Aha. He then had to contend with the Satians, ancient Semitic speaking peoples from the southeastern Levant who invaded Babylonia and sacked Uruk. He describes having annihilated their extensive forces then constructed fortresses in a mountain region called Hihi, in the desert to the west modern Syria as security outposts, and, "...he dug wells and settled people on fertile lands, to strengthen the guard." Kurigalzu I succeeded the throne, and soon came into conflict with Elam, to the east. When Herbatila, the successor of Tepti Aha, took the throne of Elam, he began raiding the Babylonia, taunting Kurigalzu to do battle with him at Der Sulgi. Kurigalzu launched a campaign which resulted in the abject defeat and capture of Herbatila, who appears in no other inscriptions. He went on to conquer the eastern lands of Elam. This took his army to the Elamite capital, the city of Susa, which was sacked. After this a puppet ruler was placed on the Elamite throne, subject to Babylonia. Kurigalzu I maintained friendly relations with Assyria, Egypt and the Hittites throughout his reign. Kadashman and Lil I 1374 BC succeeded him, and continued his diplomatic policies. Berna Buryash II ascended to the throne in 1359 BC, he retained friendly relations with Egypt, but the resurgent Middle Assyrian Empire 1365 BC to the north was now encroaching into northern Babylonia, and as a symbol of peace, the Babylonian king took the daughter of the powerful Assyrian king Ashur Ubalit I in marriage. He also maintained friendly relations with Suppalulia Marai, ruler of the Hittite Empire. He was succeeded by Kara Hardis, who was half Assyrian, and the grandson of the Assyrian king in 1333 BC, however a usurper named Nazi Bugas deposed him, enraging Ashur Ubalit I, who invaded and sacked Babylon, slew Nazi Bugas, annexed Babylonian territory for the Middle Assyrian Empire, and installed Kurigalzu II 1345 as his vassal ruler of Babylonia
Soon after Arik den Ili succeeded the throne of Assyria in 1327 BC, Kurigalzu III attacked Assyria in an attempt to reassert Babylonian power. After some impressive initial successes he was ultimately defeated, and lost yet more territory to Assyria. Between 1307 BC and 1232 BC his successes, such as Nazi Maritash, Kadashman Turgu, Kadashman Enlil II, Kudur Enlil and Shagarakti Shuriash, allied with the empires of the Hittites and the Mitanni, who were both also losing swathes of territory to the resurgent Assyrians, in a failed attempt to stop Assyrian expansion, which nevertheless continued unchecked. Kashtiliash IV's BC reign ended catastrophically as the Assyrian king Tukulti Ninurta I BC routed his armies, sacked and burned Babylon and set himself up as king, ironically becoming the first native Mesopotamian to rule the state, its previous rulers having all been non-Mesopotamian Amorites and Kassites. Kashtiliash himself was taken to Ashur as a prisoner of war. An Assyrian governor, king named Enlil Nadan Shumi was placed on the throne to rule as viceroy to Tukulti Ninurta I, and Kadashman Harbour II and Adad Shuma Idana succeeded as Assyrian governor, kings, subject to Tukulti Ninurta I until 1216 BC. Babylon did not begin to recover until late in the reign of Adad Shuma Usur BC, as he too remained a vassal of Assyria until 1193 BC. However, he was able to prevent the Assyrian king Enlil Kuduri Usur from retaking Babylonia, which, apart from its northern reaches, had mostly shrugged off Assyrian domination during a short period of civil war in the Assyrian Empire, in the years after the death of Tukulti Ninurta. Meli Ship Act II 1188 BC seems to have had a peaceful reign. Despite not being able to regain northern Babylonia from Assyria, no further territory was lost, Elam did not threaten, and the Late Bronze Age collapse now affecting the Levant, Canaan, Egypt, the Caucasus, Anatolia, Mediterranean, North Africa, northern Iran and Balkans seemed initially to have little impact on Babylonia or indeed Assyria and Elam. War resumed under subsequent kings such as Marduk Apla Idana I and Zababa Shuma Idan The long-reigning Assyrian king Ashur Dan I resumed expansionist policies and conquered further parts of northern Babylonia from both kings, and the Elamite ruler Shutruk Nakante eventually conquered most of eastern Babylonia. Enlil Nadan Ahhe was finally overthrown and the Kassite dynasty ended after Ashur Dan I conquered yet more of northern and central Babylonia, and the equally powerful Shutruk Nahunt pushed deep into the heart of Babylonia itself, sacking the city and slaying the king. Poetical works have been found lamenting this disaster. Despite the loss of territory, general military weakness, and evident reduction in literacy and culture, the Kassite dynasty was the longest-lived dynasty of Babylon, lasting until 1155 BC, when Babylon was conquered by Shutruk Nakante of Elam, and reconquered a few years later by the Nebuchadnezzar I, part of the larger Late Bronze Age collapse. Early Iron Age, native rule, Second Dynasty of Isin, 1155–1026 BC 
The Elamites did not remain in control of Babylonia long, instead entering into an ultimately unsuccessful war with Assyria, allowing Marduk Kabataheshu (1155–1139 BC) to establish the dynasty the Fourth of Babylon from Isin, with the very first native Akkadian-speaking South Mesopotamian dynasty to rule Babylonia, with Marduk Kabataheshu becoming only the second native Mesopotamian to sit on the throne of Babylon, after the Assyrian king Tukulti Ninurta I his dynasty was to remain in power for some 125 years. The new king successfully drove out the Elamites and prevented any possible Kassite revival. Later in his reign he went to war with Assyria, and had some initial success, briefly capturing the south Assyrian city of Ekalatum before ultimately suffering defeat at the hands of Ashur Dan I. Iti Marduk Balatu succeeded his father in 1138 BC, and successfully repelled Elamite attacks on Babylonia during his eight-year reign. He too made attempts to attack Assyria, but also met with failure at the hands of the still reigning Ashur Dan I. Ninurta Nadan Shumi took the throne in 1137 BC, and also attempted an invasion of Assyria. His armies seem to have skirted through eastern Aramea modern Syria and then made an attempt to attack the Assyrian city of Arbela modern Erbil from the west. However this bold move met with defeat at the hands of Ashur Resh Ishi I who then forced a treaty in his favor upon the Babylonian king. Nebuchadnezzar I was the most famous ruler of this dynasty. He fought and defeated the Elamites and drove them from Babylonian territory, invading Elam itself, sacking the Elamite capital Susa, and recovering the sacred statue of Marduk that had been carried off from Babylon during the fall of the Kassites. Shortly afterwards, the king of Elam was assassinated and his kingdom disintegrated into civil war. However, Nebuchadnezzar failed to extend Babylonian territory further, being defeated a number of times by Ashur Reshishi I (1133–1115 BC), king of the Middle Assyrian Empire, for control of formerly Hittite-controlled territories in Aram and Anatolia. The Hittite Empire of the northern and western Levant and eastern Anatolia had been largely annexed by the Middle Assyrian Empire, and its heartland finally overrun by invading Phrygians from the Balkans. In the later years of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar I devoted himself to peaceful building projects and securing Babylonia's borders against the Assyrians, Elamites and Arameans. Nebuchadnezzar was succeeded by his two sons, firstly Enlil Nadan Apli (1103–1100), who lost territory to Assyria. The second of them, Marduk Nadan Ahhe (1098–1081 BC), also went to war with Assyria. Some initial success in these conflicts gave way to a catastrophic defeat at the hands of the powerful Assyrian king Tiglath Pileser I (1115–1076 BC), who annexed huge swathes of Babylonian territory, thus further expanding the Assyrian Empire. Following this, a terrible famine gripped Babylon, inviting attacks and migrations from the northwest Semitic Arameans and Satyans from the Levant. In 1072 BC, Marduk Shapakzeri signed a peace treaty with Ashur Bel Kala of Assyria, however, his successor Kadasman Buryas was not so friendly to Assyria prompting the Assyrian king to invade Babylonia and depose him, placing Adad Apla Idana on the throne as his vassal. Assyrian domination continued until c. 1050 BC, with Marduk Ahhe Ereba and Marduk Zedda X regarded as vassals of Assyria. 
After 1050 BC the Middle Assyrian Empire descended into a period of civil war, followed by constant warfare with the Arameans, Phrygians, Neo-Hittite states and Hurrians, allowing Babylonia to once more largely free itself from the Assyrian yoke for a few decades. However East Semitic-speaking Babylonia soon began to suffer further repeated incursions from West Semitic nomadic peoples migrating from the Levant during the Bronze Age collapse, and during the 11th century BC large swathes of the Babylonian countryside was appropriated and occupied by these newly arrived Arameans and Satyans. Arameans settled much of the countryside in eastern and central Babylonia and the Satyans in the western deserts, with the weak Babylonian kings being unable to stem these migrations. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Period of Chaos 1026 to 911 BC. The ruling Babylonian dynasty of Nabu Shum Liber was deposed by marauding Arameans in 1026 BC, and the heart of Babylonia, including the capital city itself, descended into anarchic state, and no king was to rule Babylon for over 20 years. However, in southern Mesopotamia, a region corresponding with the old dynasty of the Sealand, dynasty the 5th, 1025 to 1004 BC, arose. This was ruled by Simbar Shipak, leader of a Kassite clan, and was in effect a separate state from Babylon. The state of Anarchy allowed the Assyrian ruler Ashur Narari IV the opportunity to attack Babylonia in 1018 BC, and he invaded and captured the Babylonian city of Atlila and some northern regions for Assyria. The South Mesopotamian dynasty was replaced by another Kassite dynasty, Dynasty the Sixth, 1003 to 984 BC, which also seems to have regained control over Babylon itself. The Elamites deposed this brief Kassite revival, with King Ma Bitiaplausur founding Dynasty the Seventh, 984 to 977 BC. However, this dynasty too fell when the Arameans once more ravaged Babylon. Babylonian rule was restored by Nabu Mukan Apli in 977 BC, ushering in Dynasty VIII. Dynasty the Ninth begins with Ninurta Kuduri Usur II, who ruled from 941 BC. Babylonia remained weak during this period, with whole areas of Babylonia now under firm Aramean and Satian control. Babylonian rulers were often forced to bow to pressure from Assyria and Elam, both of which had appropriated Babylonian territory. Topic: <inaudible> Assyrian rule 911 to 619 BC. Babylonia remained in a state of chaos as the 10th century BC drew to a close. A further migration of nomads from the Levant occurred in the early 9th century BC with the arrival of the Chaldeans, another nomadic northwest Semitic people described in Assyrian annals as the Kaldu. The Chaldeans settled in the far southeast of Babylonia, joining the already long extant Arameans and Satyans. By 850 BC the migrant Chaldeans had established their own land in the extreme southeast of Mesopotamia. From 911 BC with the founding of the Neo-Assyrian Empire 911 to 605 BC by Adad-Nirari II, Babylon found itself once again under the domination and rule of its fellow Mesopotamian state for the next three centuries. 
Adad Narari II twice attacked and defeated Shamash Madamik of Babylonia, annexing a large area of land north of the Diyala River and the towns of Hit and Zank in mid Mesopotamia. He made further gains over Babylonia under Nabu Shuma Ukini later in his reign. Tukulti Ninurta II and Ashurnazirpal II also forced Babylonia into vassalage, and Shalmaneser III BC sacked Babylon itself, slew King Nabu Apla Idana, subjugated the Aramean, Satian, and Chaldean tribes settled within Babylonia, and installed Marduk Zakir Shumi I BC, followed by Marduk Balasu I Qbi BC as his vassals. It was during the late 850s BC, in the annals of Shalmaneser III, that the Chaldeans and Arabs are first mentioned in the pages of written recorded history. Upon the death of Shalmaneser II, Barbara Haridana was reduced to vassalage by the Assyrian queen Shamuramat known as Semiramis to the Persians, Armenians and Greeks, acting as regent to his successor Adad Narari III who was merely a boy. Adad Narari III eventually killed Barbara Haridana and ruled there directly until 800 BC until Ninurta Aplax was crowned. However he too was subjugated by Adad Narari II. The next Assyrian king, Shamshi Adad V then made a vassal of Marduk Belzeri. Babylonia briefly fell to another foreign ruler when Marduk Aplausur ascended the throne in 780 BC, taking advantage of a period of civil war in Assyria. He was a member of the Chaldean tribe who had a century or so earlier settled in a small region in the far southeastern corner of Mesopotamia, bordering the Persian Gulf and southwestern Elam. Shamshi Adad V attacked him and retook northern Babylonia, forcing a border treaty in Assyria's favor upon him. However he was allowed to remain on the throne, and successfully stabilized the part of Babylonia he controlled. Ereba Marduk, another Chaldean, succeeded him in 769 BC and his son, Nabu Shuma Ishkan in 761 BC. Babylonia appears to have been in a state of chaos during this time, with the north occupied by Assyria, its throne occupied by foreign Chaldeans, and civil unrest prominent throughout the land. The Babylonian king Nabo Nasser overthrew the Chaldean usurpers in 748 BC, and successfully stabilized Babylonia, remaining untroubled by Ashur Narari v of Assyria. However, with the accession of Tiglath Pileser III 745 to 727 BC, Babylonia came under renewed attack. Babylon was invaded and sacked and Nabonassar reduced to vassalage. His successors Nabu Nadanzeri, Nabu Suma Ukin II, and Nabu Mukanzeri were also in servitude to Tiglath Pileser III, until in 729 BC the Assyrian king decided to rule Babylon directly as its king instead of allowing Babylonian kings to remain as vassals of Assyria as his predecessors had done for 200 years. It was during this period that Eastern Aramaic was introduced by the Assyrians as the lingua franca of the Neo-Assyrian Empire, and Mesopotamian Aramaic began to supplant Akkadian as the spoken language of the general populace of both Assyria and Babylonia. The Assyrian king Shalmaneser V was declared king of Babylon in 727 BC, but died whilst besieging Samaria in 722 BC. Revolt was then fermented against Assyrian domination by Marduk Apla Idana II, a Chaldean Malka chieftain of the far southeast of Mesopotamia, with strong Elamite support. 
Marduk Apla Idana managed to take the throne of Babylon itself between 721 to 710 BC, whilst the Assyrian king Sargon II, 722 to 705 BC, were otherwise occupied in defeating the Scythians and Sumerians who had attacked Assyria's Persian and Median vassal colonies in ancient Iran. Marduk Apla Idana II was eventually defeated and ejected by Sargon II of Assyria, and fled to his protectors in Elam. Sargon II was then declared king in Babylon. Sennacherib BC succeeded Sargon II, and after ruling directly for a while, he placed his son Ashur Nadin Shumi on the throne. However Merodach Baladan and his Elamite protectors continued to unsuccessfully agitate against Assyrian rule. Nurg al an Elamite, murdered the Assyrian prince and briefly took the throne. This led to the infuriated Assyrian king Sennacherib invading and subjugating Elam and sacking Babylon, laying waste to and largely destroying the city. Sennacherib was soon murdered by his own sons while praying to the god Nisroch in Nineveh in 681 BC. A puppet king Marduk Zakir Shumi II was placed on the throne by the new Assyrian king Esarhaddon. However, Marduk Apla Idana returned from exile in Elam, and briefly deposed him, forcing Esarhaddon to attack and defeat him, whereupon he once more fled to his masters in Elam, where he died in exile. Esarhaddon ruled Babylon personally, he completely rebuilt the city, bringing rejuvenation and peace to the region. Upon his death, and in an effort to maintain harmony within his vast empire which stretched from the Caucasus to Egypt and Nubia and from Cyprus to Iran, he installed his eldest son Shamash Shum Ukin as a subject king in Babylon, and his youngest, the highly educated Ashurbanipal BC, in the more senior position as king of Assyria and overlord of Shamash Shum Ukin. Despite being an Assyrian himself, Shamash Shum Ukin, after decades subject to his brother Ashurbanipal, declared that the city of Babylon and not the Assyrian city of Nineveh should be the seat of the immense empire. He raised a major revolt against his brother, Ashurbanipal. He led a powerful coalition of peoples also resentful of Assyrian subjugation and rule, including Elam, the Persians, Medes, the Babylonians, Chaldeans and Satians of southern Mesopotamia, the Arameans of the Levant and southwest Mesopotamia, the Arabs and Dilmunites of the Arabian Peninsula and the Canaanites Phoenicians. After a bitter struggle Babylon was sacked and its allies vanquished, Shamash Shum Ukim being killed in the process. Elam was destroyed once and for all, and the Babylonians, Persians, Chaldeans, Arabs, Medes, Elamites, Arameans, Satians, and Canaanites were violently subjugated, with Assyrian troops exacting savage revenge on the rebelling peoples. An Assyrian governor named Kandalanu was placed on the throne to rule on behalf of the Assyrian king. Upon Ashurbanipal's death in 627 BC, his son Ashur Etalalani became ruler of Babylon and Assyria. However, Assyria soon descended into a series of brutal internal civil wars which were to cause its downfall. Ashur Etel Alani was deposed by one of his own generals, named Sin Shumu Lishir in 623 BC, who also set himself up as king in Babylon. 
After only one year on the throne amidst continual civil war, Sinsherishkan (622–612 BC) ousted him as ruler of Assyria and Babylonia in 622 BC. However, he too was beset by constant unremitting civil war in the Assyrian heartland. Babylonia took advantage of this and rebelled under Nabopolassar, a previously unknown Malka chieftain of the Chaldeans, who had settled in southeastern Mesopotamia by c. 850 BC. It was during the reign of Sin Sharishkan that Assyria's vast empire began to unravel, and many of its former subject peoples ceased to pay tribute, most significantly for the Assyrians, the Babylonians, Chaldeans, Medes, Persians, Scythians, Arameans, and Sumerians. Neo-Babylonian Empire Chaldean era. In 620 BC Nabopolassar seized control over much of Babylonia with the support of most of the inhabitants, with only the city of Nippur and some northern regions showing any loyalty to the beleaguered Assyrian king. Nabopolassar was unable to utterly secure Babylonia, and for the next four years he was forced to contend with an occupying Assyrian army encamped in Babylonia trying to unseat him. However, the Assyrian king, Sin Shah Ishkan was plagued by constant revolts among his people in Nineveh, and was thus prevented from ejecting Nabopolassar. The stalemate ended in 615 BC, when Nabopolassar entered the Babylonians and Chaldeans into alliance with Syakhes, an erstwhile vassal of Assyria, and king of the Iranian peoples, the Medes, Persians, Sagatians and Parthians. Syakhes had also taken advantage of the Assyrian destruction of the formerly regionally dominant pre-Iranian Elamite and Manian nations and the subsequent anarchy in Assyria to free the Iranic peoples from three centuries of the Assyrian yoke and regional Elamite domination. The Scythians from north of the Caucasus, and the Sumerians from the Black Sea who had both also been subjugated by Assyria, joined the alliance, as did regional Aramean tribes. In 615 BC, while the Assyrian king was fully occupied fighting rebels in both Babylonia and Assyria itself, Syakhers launched a surprise attack on the Assyrian heartlands, sacking the cities of Kalhu the biblical Kala, Nimrud and Arapka modern Kirkuk. Nabopolassar was still pinned down in southern Mesopotamia and thus not involved in this breakthrough. From this point on the coalition of Babylonians, Chaldeans, Medes, Persians, Scythians, Sumerians and Sagatians fought in unison against a civil war ravaged Assyria. Major Assyrian cities such as Ashur, Arbela modern Erbil, Guzana, Der Sharukan modern Khorsabad, Imager and Lil, Nibati Ashur, Gassur, Kanesh, Kar Ashur Nasipal and Tushan fell to the alliance during 614 BC. Sin Shah Ishkan somehow managed to rally against the odds during 613 BC, and drove back the combined forces ranged against him. However, the alliance launched a renewed combined attack the following year, and after five years of fierce fighting Nineveh was sacked in late 612 BC after a prolonged siege, in which Sin Shah Ishkan was killed defending his capital. House-to-house -house fighting continued in Nineveh, and an Assyrian general and member of the royal household, took the throne as Ashur Ubalit II BC. He was offered the chance of accepting a position of vassalage by the leaders of the alliance according to the Babylonian Chronicle. However he refused and managed to successfully fight his way out of Nineveh and to the northern Assyrian city of Haran in Upper Mesopotamia where he founded a new capital. 
The fighting continued, as the Assyrian king held out against the alliance until 607 BC, when he was eventually ejected by the Medes, Babylonians, Scythians and their allies, and prevented in an attempt to regain the city the same year. The Egyptian pharaoh Necho II, whose dynasty had been installed as vassals of Assyria in 671 BC, belatedly tried to aid Egypt's former Assyrian masters, possibly out of fear that Egypt would be next to succumb to the new powers without Assyria to protect them, having already been ravaged by the Scythians. The Assyrians fought on with Egyptian aid until what was probably a final decisive victory was achieved against them at Carchemish in northwestern Assyria in 605 BC. The seat of empire was thus transferred to Babylonia for the first time since Hammurabi over a thousand years before. Nabopolassar was followed by his son Nebuchadnezzar II BC, whose reign of 43 years made Babylon once more the ruler of much of the civilized world, taking over portions of the former Assyrian Empire, with the eastern and northeastern portion being taken by the Medes and the far north by the Scythians. Nebuchadnezzar II may have also had to contend with remnants of the Assyrian resistance. Some sections of the Assyrian army and administration may have still continued in and around Der Katlimu in northwest Assyria for a time, however by 599 BC Assyrian imperial records from this region also fell silent. The fate of Ashur Ubalit II remains unknown, and he may have been killed attempting to regain Haran, at Carchemish, or continued to fight on, eventually disappearing into obscurity. The Scythians and Sumerians, erstwhile allies of Babylonia under Nabopolassar, now became a threat, and Nebuchadnezzar II was forced to march into Anatolia and rout their forces, ending the northern threat to his empire. The Egyptians attempted to remain in the Near East, possibly in an effort to aid in restoring Assyria as a secure buffer against Babylonia and the Medes and Persians, or to carve out an empire of their own. Nebuchadnezzar II campaigned against the Egyptians and drove them back over the Sinai. However an attempt to take Egypt itself as his Assyrian predecessors had succeeded in doing failed, mainly due to a series of rebellions from the Israelites of Judah and the former kingdom of Ephraim, the Phoenicians of Canaan and the Arameans of the Levant. The Babylonian king crushed these rebellions, deposed Jehuiakim, the king of Judah and deported a sizable part of the population to Babylonia. Cities like Tyre, Sidon and Damascus were also subjugated. The Arabs and other South Arabian peoples who dwelt in the deserts to the south of the borders of Mesopotamia were then also subjugated. In 567 BC he went to war with Pharaoh Amasis, and briefly invaded Egypt itself. After securing his empire, which included marrying a Median princess, he devoted himself to maintaining the empire and conducting numerous impressive building projects in Babylon. He is credited with building the fabled Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Amal Marduk succeeded to the throne and reigned for only two years. Little contemporary record of his rule survives, though Barossus later stated that he was deposed and murdered in 560 BC by his successor Neroglissa for conducting himself in an improper manner. Neroglissa also had a short reign. He was the son-in-law of Nebuchadnezzar II, and it is unclear if he was a Chaldean or native Babylonian who married into the dynasty. He campaigned in Aram and Phoenicia, successfully maintaining Babylonian rule in these regions. 
Neraglissa died young however, and was succeeded by his son Labashi Marduk who was still a boy. He was deposed and killed during the same year in a palace conspiracy. Of the reign of the last Babylonian king, Nabonidus Nabu Naid, 556–539 BC who is the son of the Assyrian priestess Adda Guppi and who managed to kill the last Chaldean king, Labashi Marduk, and took the reign, there is a fair amount of information available. Nabonidus hence his son, the regent Belshazzar was, at least from the mother's side, neither Chaldean nor Babylonian, but ironically Assyrian, hailing from its final capital of Haran Karanu. His father's origins remain unknown. Information regarding Nabonidus is chiefly derived from a chronological tablet containing the annals of Nabonidus, supplemented by another inscription of Nabonidus where he recounts his restoration of the Temple of the Moon God Sin at Haran, as well as by a proclamation of Cyrus issued shortly after his formal recognition as King of Babylonia. A number of factors arose which would ultimately lead to the fall of Babylon. The population of Babylonia became restive and increasingly disaffected under Nabonidus. He excited a strong feeling against himself by attempting to centralize the polytheistic religion of Babylonia in the Temple of Marduk at Babylon, and while he had thus alienated the local priesthoods, the military party also despised him on account of his antiquarian tastes. He seemed to have left the defense of his kingdom to his son Belshazzar a capable soldier but poor diplomat who alienated the political elite, occupying himself with the more congenial work of excavating the foundation records of the temples and determining the dates of the builders. He also spent time outside Babylonia, rebuilding temples in the Assyrian city of Haran, and also among his Arab subjects in the deserts to the south of Mesopotamia. Nabonidus and Belshazzar's Assyrian heritage is also likely to have added to this resentment. In addition, Mesopotamian military might had usually been concentrated in the martial state of Assyria. Babylonia had always been more vulnerable to conquest and invasion than its northern neighbor, and without the might of Assyria to keep foreign powers in check and Mesopotamia dominant, Babylonia was ultimately exposed. It was in the sixth year of Nabonidus, 549 BC, that Cyrus the Great, the Achaemenid Persian, king of Anshan, in Elam, revolted against his suzerain Astyages, king of the Manda, or Medes, at Ekbatana. Astyages' army betrayed him to his enemy, and Cyrus established himself at Ekbatana, thus putting an end to the empire of the Medes and making the Persian faction dominant among the Iranich peoples. Three years later Cyrus had become king of all Persia, and was engaged in a campaign to put down a revolt among the Assyrians. Meanwhile, Nabonidus had established a camp in the desert of his colony of Arabia, near the southern frontier of his kingdom, leaving his son Belshazzar in command of the army. In 539 BC Cyrus invaded Babylonia. A battle was fought at Opus in the month of June, where the Babylonians were defeated, and immediately afterwards Sippa surrendered to the invader. Nabonidus fled to Babylon, where he was pursued by Gobrius, and on the sixteenth day of Tammuz, two days after the capture of Sippa, the soldiers of Cyrus entered Babylon without fighting. Nabonidus was dragged from his hiding place, where the services continued without interruption. Cyrus did not arrive until 3 March's van October, Gobrius having acted for him in his absence. Gobrius was now made governor of the province of Babylon, and a few days afterwards Belshazzar the son of Nabonidus died in battle. 
A public mourning followed, lasting six days, and Cyrus' son Cambyses accompanied the corpse to the tomb. One of the first acts of Cyrus accordingly was to allow the Jewish exiles to return to their own homes, carrying with them their sacred temple vessels. The permission to do so was embodied in a proclamation, whereby the conqueror endeavored to justify his claim to the Babylonian throne. Cyrus now claimed to be the legitimate successor of the ancient Babylonian kings and the avenger of Bel Marduk, who was assumed to be wrathful at the impiety of Nabonidus in removing the images of the local gods from their ancestral shrines to his capital Babylon. The Chaldean tribe had lost control of Babylonia decades before the end of the era that sometimes bears their name, and they appear to have blended into the general populace of Babylonia even before this, for example, Nabopolassar, Nebuchadnezzar II and their successors always referred to themselves as Shah Akada and never as Shah Kaldu on inscriptions, and during the Persian Achaemenid Empire the term Chaldean ceased to refer to a race of people, and instead specifically to a social class of priests educated in classical Babylonian literature, particularly astronomy and astrology. By the mid Seleucid Empire, 312 to 150 BC, period this term too had fallen from use. Topic: <laughs> Persian Babylonia. Babylonia was absorbed into the Achaemenid Empire in 539 BC. A year before Cyrus' death, in 529 BC, he elevated his son Cambyses II in the government, making him king of Babylon, while he reserved for himself the fuller title of «king of the other provinces» of the empire. It was only when Darius I acquired the Persian throne and ruled it as a representative of the Zoroastrian religion, that the old tradition was broken and the claim of Babylon to confer legitimacy on the rulers of Western Asia ceased to be acknowledged. Immediately after Darius seized Persia, Babylonia briefly recovered its independence under a native ruler, Nidin Tabel, who took the name of Nebuchadnezzar III, and reigned from October 5. 22 BC to August 520 BC, when Darius took the city by storm. During this period, Assyria to the north also rebelled. A few years later, probably 514 BC, Babylon again revolted under the Armenian king Nebuchadnezzar IV. On this occasion, after its capture by the Persians, the walls were partly destroyed. The Esagila, the great temple of Bel, however, still continued to be kept in repair and to be a center of Babylonian religious feelings. Alexander the Great conquered Babylon in 333 BC for the Greeks, and died there in 323 BC. Babylonia and Assyria then became part of the Greek Seleucid Empire. It has long been maintained that the foundation of Seleucia diverted the population to the new capital of southern Mesopotamia, and that the ruins of the old city became a quarry for the builders of the new seat of government, but the recent publication of the Babylonian Chronicles has shown that urban life was still very much the same well into the Parthian Empire 150 BC to 226 AD. The Parthian king Mithridates conquered the region into the Parthian Empire in 150 BC, and the region became something of a battleground between Greeks and Parthians. There was a brief interlude of Roman conquest the provinces of Assyria and Mesopotamia, 116–118 AD under Trajan, after which the Parthians reasserted control. 
The satrapy of Babylonia was absorbed into Assyristan, meaning the land of the Assyrians in Persian, in the Sasanian Empire, which began in 226 AD, and by this time East Syriac Rite Syriac Christianity, which emerged in Assyria and Upper Mesopotamia the 1st century AD, had become the dominant religion among the native Assyrian Babylonian populace, who had never adopted the Zoroastrianism or Hellenic religions and languages of their rulers. Apart from the small 2nd century BC to 3rd century AD independent Neo-Assyrian states of Adiabene, Osrene, Ashur, Beth Garmai, Beth Nuhadra and Hatra in the north, Mesopotamia remained under largely Persian control until the Arab Muslim conquest of Persia in the 7th century AD. Assyristan was dissolved as a geopolitical entity in 637 AD, and the native Eastern Aramaic-speaking and largely Christian populace of southern and central Mesopotamia with the exception of the Mandines gradually underwent Arabization and Islamization in contrast to northern Mesopotamia where an Assyrian continuity endures to the present day. Culture Bronze Age to Early Iron Age Mesopotamian culture is sometimes summarized as Assyria Babylonian because of the close ethnic, linguistic, and cultural interdependence of the two political centers. The term Babylonia especially in writings from around the early 20th century, was formally used to also include southern Mesopotamia's earliest pre-Babylonian history, and not only in reference to the later city-state of Babylon proper. This geographic usage of the name Babylonia has generally been replaced by the more accurate term Sumer or Sumero-Akkadian in more recent writing, referring to the pre-Assyria Babylonian Mesopotamian civilization. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Babylonian culture. Art and architecture In Babylonia, an abundance of clay, and lack of stone, led to greater use of mud brick. Babylonian, Sumerian, and Assyrian temples were massive structures of crude brick which were supported by buttresses, the rain being carried off by drains. One such drain at Yor was made of lead. The use of brick led to the early development of the pilaster and column, and of frescoes and enamel tiles. The walls were brilliantly colored, and sometimes plated with zinc or gold, as well as with tiles. Painted terracotta cones for torches were also embedded in the plaster. In Babylonia, in place of the relief, there was greater use of three-dimensional figures, the earliest examples being the statues of Gudea, that are realistic if somewhat clumsy. The paucity of stone in Babylonia made every pebble precious, and led to a high perfection in the art of gem cutting. <laughs> <laughs> Astronomy Tablets dating back to the Old Babylonian period document the application of mathematics to the variation in the length of daylight over a solar year. Centuries of Babylonian observations of celestial phenomena are recorded in the series of cuneiform script tablets known as the Enuma Anu Enlil. The oldest significant astronomical text that we possess is Tablet 63 of Enuma Anu Enlil, the Venus Tablet of Ami Saduka, which lists the first and last visible risings of Venus over a period of about 21 years and is the earliest evidence that the phenomena of a planet were recognized as periodic. The oldest rectangular astrolabe dates back to Babylonia c. 
1100 BC, the Mul Appen, contains catalogues of stars and constellations as well as schemes for predicting heliacal risings and the settings of the planets, lengths of daylight measured by a water clock, gnomon, shadows, and intercalations. The Babylonian Gu text arranges stars in strings that lie along declination circles and thus measure right ascensions or time intervals, and also employs the stars of the zenith, which are also separated by given right ascensional differences. <laughs> Medicine Medical diagnosis and prognosis We find medical semiotics in a whole constellation of disciplines. There was a real common ground among these Babylonian forms of knowledge an approach involving analysis of particular cases, constructed only through traces, symptoms, hints. In short, we can speak about a symptomatic or divinatory or conjectural paradigm which could be oriented toward past present or future, depending on the form of knowledge called upon. Toward future That was the medical science of symptoms, with its double character, diagnostic, explaining past and present, and prognostic, suggesting likely future. The oldest Babylonian i.e., Akkadian texts on medicine date back to the first Babylonian dynasty in the first half of the second millennium BC although the earliest medical prescriptions appear in Sumerian during the third dynasty of your period. The most extensive Babylonian medical text, however, is the diagnostic handbook written by the Umanu, or chief scholar, Esigal Kin Apli of Borsippa, during the reign of the Babylonian king Adad Apla Idina .Along with contemporary ancient Egyptian medicine, the Babylonians introduced the concepts of diagnosis, prognosis, physical examination, and prescriptions. In addition, the Diagnostic Handbook introduced the methods of therapy and etiology and the use of empiricism, logic and rationality in diagnosis, prognosis and therapy. The text contains a list of medical symptoms and often detailed empirical observations along with logical rules used in combining observed symptoms on the body of a patient with its diagnosis and prognosis. The symptoms and diseases of a patient were treated through therapeutic means such as bandages, creams and pills. If a patient could not be cured physically, the Babylonian physicians often relied on exorcism to cleanse the patient from any curses. Essigal Kin Apli's diagnostic handbook was based on a logical set of axioms and assumptions, including the modern view that through the examination and inspection of the symptoms of a patient, it is possible to determine the patient's disease, its etiology and future development, and the chances of the patient's recovery. Essigal Kin Apli discovered a variety of illnesses and diseases and described their symptoms in his diagnostic. Handbook. These include the symptoms for many varieties of epilepsy and related ailments along with their diagnosis and prognosis. Later Babylonian medicine resembles early Greek medicine in many ways. In particular, the early treatises of the Hippocratic Corpus show the influence of late Babylonian medicine in terms of both content and form. Topic. Literature There were libraries in most towns and temples, an old Sumerian proverb averred that, "...he who would excel in the school of the scribes must rise with the dawn." 
Women as well as men learn to read and write, and in Semitic times, this involved knowledge of the extinct Sumerian language, and a complicated and extensive syllabary. A considerable amount of Babylonian literature was translated from Sumerian originals, and the language of religion and law long continued to be written in the old agglutinative language of Sumer. Vocabularies, grammars, and interlinear translations were compiled for the use of students, as well as commentaries on the older texts and explanations of obscure words and phrases. The characters of the syllabary were all arranged and named, and elaborate lists of them were drawn up. There are many Babylonian literary works whose titles have come down to us. One of the most famous of these was the Epic of Gilgamesh, in twelve books, translated from the original Sumerian by a certain Sin Liki un Nini, and arranged upon an astronomical principle. Each division contains the story of a single adventure in the career of Gilgamesh. The whole story is a composite product, and it is probable that some of the stories are artificially attached to the central figure. <laughs> Neo-Babylonian culture The brief resurgence of Babylonian culture in the 7th to 6th centuries BC was accompanied by a number of important cultural developments. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Astronomy. Among the sciences, astronomy and astrology still occupied a conspicuous place in Babylonian society. Astronomy was of old standing in Babylonia. The zodiac was a Babylonian invention of great antiquity, and eclipses of the sun and moon could be foretold. There are dozens of cuneiform records of original Mesopotamian eclipse observations. Babylonian astronomy was the basis for much of what was done in ancient Greek astronomy, in classical Indian astronomy, in Sasanian, Byzantine and Syrian astronomy, astronomy in the medieval Islamic world, and in Central Asian and Western European astronomy. Neo-Babylonian astronomy can thus be considered the direct predecessor of much of ancient Greek mathematics and astronomy, which in turn is the historical predecessor of the European Western scientific revolution. During the 8th and 7th centuries BC, Babylonian astronomers developed a new approach to astronomy. They began studying philosophy dealing with the ideal nature of the early universe and began employing an internal logic within the predictive planetary systems. This was an important contribution to astronomy and the philosophy of science and some scholars have thus referred to this new approach as the first scientific revolution. This new approach to astronomy was adopted and further developed in Greek and Hellenistic astronomy. In Seleucid and Parthian times, the astronomical reports were of a thoroughly scientific character, how much earlier their advanced knowledge and methods were developed is uncertain. The Babylonian development of methods for predicting the motions of the planets is considered to be a major episode in the history of astronomy. The only Babylonian astronomer known to have supported a heliocentric model of planetary motion was Seleucus of Seleucia b. 190 BC. Seleucus is known from the writings of Plutarch. He supported the heliocentric theory where the Earth rotated around its own axis which in turn revolved around the Sun. According to Plutarch, Seleucus even proved the heliocentric system, but it is not known what arguments he used. Mathematics <laughs> 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 Babylonian mathematical texts are plentiful and well edited. 
In respect of time they fall in two distinct groups, one from the first Babylonian dynasty period 1830–1531 BC, the other mainly Seleucid from the last three or four centuries BC. In respect of content there is scarcely any difference between the two groups of texts. Thus Babylonian mathematics remained stale in character and content, with very little progress or innovation. For nearly two millennia, the Babylonian system of mathematics was sexagesimal, or a base 60 numeral system. From this we derive the modern day usage of 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, and 360 60 by 6 degrees in a circle. The Babylonians were able to make great advances in mathematics for two reasons. First, the number 60 has many divisors 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 15, 20, and 30, making calculations easier. Additionally, unlike the Egyptians and Romans, the Babylonians had a true place value system, where digits written in the left column represented larger values, much as in our base 10 system, 734 equals 7 times 100 plus 3 times 10 plus 4 times 1. Among the Babylonians' mathematical accomplishments were the determination of the square root of 2 correctly to 7 places YBC 7289. They also demonstrated knowledge of the Pythagorean theorem well before Pythagoras, as evidenced by this tablet translated by Dennis Ramsey and dating to c. 1900 BC. 4 is the length and 5 is the diagonal. What is the breadth? Its size is not known. 4 times 4 is 16. And 5 times 5 is 25. You take 16 from 25 and there remains 9. What times what shall I take in order to get 9? 3 times 3 is 9. 3 is the breadth. The NER of 600 and the SAR of 3600 were formed from the unit of 60, corresponding with a degree of the equator. Tablets of squares and cubes, calculated from 1 to 60, have been found at Senkera, and a people acquainted with the sun dial, the clesydra, the lever and the pulley, must have had no mean knowledge of mechanics. A crystal lens, turned on the lathe, was discovered by Austin Henry Layard at Nimrud along with glass vases bearing the name of Sargon. This could explain the excessive minuteness of some of the writing on the Assyrian tablets, and a lens may also have been used in the observation of the heavens. The Babylonians might have been familiar with the general rules for measuring the areas. They measured the circumference of a circle as three times the diameter and the area as one twelfth the square of the circumference, which would be correct if π were estimated as 3. The volume of a cylinder was taken as the product of the base and the height, however, the volume of the frustum of a cone or a square pyramid was incorrectly taken as the product of the height and half the sum of the bases. Also, there was a recent discovery in which a tablet used pi as 3 and 1 8. The Babylonians are also known for the Babylonian mile, which was a measure of distance equal to about 11 km 7 miles today. This measurement for distances eventually was converted to a time mile used for measuring the travel of the Sun, therefore, representing time, eaves, chapter 2. The Babylonians used also space-time graphs to calculate the velocity of Jupiter. This is an idea that is considered highly modern, traced to the 14th century England and France and anticipating integral calculus. Philosophy <laughs> <laughs> 
The origins of Babylonian philosophy can be traced back to early Mesopotamian wisdom literature, which embodied certain philosophies of life, particularly ethics, in the forms of dialectic, dialogues, epic poetry, folklore, hymns, lyrics, prose, and proverbs. Babylonian reasoning and rationality developed beyond empirical observation. It is possible that Babylonian philosophy had an influence on Greek philosophy, particularly Hellenistic philosophy. The Babylonian text Dialogue of Pessimism contains similarities to the agonistic thought of the Sophists, the Heraclitian doctrine of contrasts, and the dialogues of Plato, as well as a precursor to the Maiutic Socratic method of Socrates. The Milesian philosopher Thales is also known to have studied philosophy in Mesopotamia. Legacy Babylonia, and particularly its capital city Babylon, has long held a place in the Abrahamic religions as a symbol of excess and dissolute power. Many references are made to Babylon in the Bible, both literally historical and allegorically. The mentions in the Tanakh tend to be historical or prophetic, while New Testament apocalyptic references to the Whore of Babylon are more likely figurative, or cryptic references possibly to pagan Rome, or some other archetype. The legendary Hanging Gardens of Babylon and the Tower of Babel are seen as symbols of luxurious and arrogant power respectively. Early Christians sometimes referred to Rome as Babylon. The Apostle Peter ends his first letter with this advice She who is in Babylon, Rome, chosen together with you, sends you her greetings, and so does my son Mark. 1 Peter 5, verse 13. Revelation 14, verse 8 says, a second angel followed and said, Fallen! Fallen is Babylon the Great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries." Other examples can be found in Revelation 16 verse 19 and Revelation 18 verse 2. Babylon is referred to in Quran in verse 102 of chapter 2 of Surah Baqara the cow the Quran chapter 2 al-Baqara verse 102 and they followed instead what the devils had recited during the reign of Solomon it was not Solomon who disbelieved but the devils disbelieved teaching people magic and that which was revealed to the two angels at Babylon Harit and Marut But the two angels do not teach anyone unless they say We are a trial so do not disbelieve by practicing magic And yet they learn from them that by which they cause separation between a man and his wife but they do not harm anyone through it except by permission of Allah. And the people learn what harms them and does not benefit them. But the children of Israel certainly knew that whoever purchased the magic would not have in the hereafter any share. And wretched is that for which they sold themselves, if they only knew. Translated by Sahih International Topic. See also Timeline of the Assyrian Empire Notes <laughs> <laughs>